Welcome back to the Lady Babylon Wednesday night Bible study. Isn't that some pleasant Zane Campbell? Thank you, Zane, for the music. It's so outstanding. Tonight, tonight, put your seats in their upright positions. I am going to do something here that we have not done. I am going to break the seal on a book that has been concealed for centuries. And then after that, we're going to spend some time with the junkie, St. Paul. And we are going to look at him doing his thing with his drugs on Lady Babylon. As we get started here, I want to clear the air a little bit. I want to remind you that as you watch this, nobody will be paid from it. And I want you to focus on that which is sacred. I don't want your money. I don't want to sell you a hat. I just want you here to see the opening, the unsealing of a hidden book. We're going to penetrate that inner sanctuary tonight. We're going to enter in. I'm going to give it to you. It is my gift to you. We are taking back that Greek text tonight. Oh, love it. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? Let's cleanse this place. Let's get it completely cleaned up. Let's honor tonight Hephaestus. desire that drives that light bringer that's what we're looking at tonight i'm going to bring you a couple of texts i'm going to present to you something that you have seen before maybe once or twice maybe when you went to church maybe when you went to synagogue maybe when you were in a religion class in college you've seen this sometime now I'm going to show it to you with the eyes of one who sees. We're going to open the seal 
bring forward the ion and show you God. Tonight, God is drugging Adam. Let's go to the place immediately and see where he's drugging Adam. Let's take our Bacchic trek there tonight. Chewy, hit us with the first star system, please. I got this later for St. Paul. Fantastic. Aute biblos genesels ura nukages hote egeneto. A lot of you have seen this. It's in Genesis. It's from the Septuagint, right? And it starts out, verse 4 here is chapter 2, right? This is the Biblos. This is the what? You, you will want to run right by that and say, this is a book. This is the book of the generation of Uranos and Gaia. This is the book of the generation of Uranos and Gaia. This is the Bible? Yes. Now let me to undo the seal for you. Do you see the word Biblos? How clever. How cleverly hidden in Greek. You see that word Biblos? This is not Biblion. This is not the word for book. This is not the word for book. This is the power of the generation of Uranus and Gaia. Let's see. Let's just, for those of you who are skeptics, let's go to the next. Yep, there we go. Um, just for your own sake, you, here you go, Biblos, an Egyptian papyrus. For those of you who feel good about this, right? Or a rind enclosing the pith and the plant. Nice. Isn't that nice? Slices of pith. You know, they're describing the making a papyrus roll, right? And her therefore a book. I want you to notice something, though. Go to the next one. I'm just going to blow it up. I'm just going to blow it up so you can see it, especially of sacred or magical writings. These are the works of the muse, right? These are the works of Musaios and Orpheus, right? This is the Orphic stuff, people. But look, look down on that fifth to last line on the bottom next to the big LXX. That's our passage, Genesis. Why is it here? Because, take it down, because this is the magic book of the generation of Gaia and Uranus. And this is about the Curios, Curios, who made paradise. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. I'm so excited. Let's go. Let's go back to the source. You guys are, okay. Let's just hang in there. This is going to get, yep, yep. Next one, please. Brilliant. Watch this, guys. Um, and yeah, kai eplasen. Eplasen. Do you know what plaso means in Greek? Plaso. It means to educate. It means to finish. It means to bring one to a technical capacity. Yes. It doesn't say make. Here it says, and God educated the man, the person, the anthropos, who was this offspring, this dirt from Gaia, this dirt from Gaia. Do you hear what generation you're in? Yes, you do, right? There, there is nothing that is not Greek about this Bible that is supposedly from Hebrew. There is nothing not Greek about this so far. Remember, people, we're taking it back, right? The history. So we're looking at this as it is translated from um, the 3rd century B.C. The 3rd century B.C. We don't have to use E's around here. We're free to use the B and the C. So this is 3rd century, you know, 3rd century. And th that's where this vocabulary is coming from. But let's look at it closely. It's a magic book, it says. Are you ready to see what the magic book says? You're going to meet God for the first time. Right? Curios. There's a bunch. There's a bunch. Don't worry. But this is the Curios. And he's going to set things up so that we can all have a bucket good time. Give me the next source. Please. Yep. 
uh, go back. Yeah, here it's just the definition for you know training, right? This is what you didn't know. You thought God made Adam. You thought he made. Wait, take it down. That's funny. You thought he made Adam. You thought he, this is the first dude who popped into existence, didn't you? Adam is a Mycenaean name that goes back a thousand years before this document of Genesis was created in the third century. It goes back a thousand years. Adamus, you know, there's an Adam in the in Homer. There's an Adam in Homer. Oh, <gasps> yes. Can you feel it tonight? Oh, the electricity. Thank you for spending your time with me. I appreciate your time. Okay, let's, Chewie, let's keep these people on track because they didn't come here to waste time. Okay, so, you know, um, this is the man that's made of that. What does he do? He imbues within his prosopon. He puts within his countenance the breath of Zoe. The breath of Zoe? The breath of Zoe is what becomes his psyche? G give me the next one. What is the who is Zoe? Who, wait, is this the Bible? Yes. Is it Genesis? Yes. Is there a Zoe there? You didn't know there was a Zoe there. Here she is, verse 20. Kai e kalison. Adam to onomates kunaikosa to Zoe. Isn't that a beautiful name? Look, it's the middle word in the bottom line. Zoe. Look at that Zoe. Love it. It's gorgeous, Zoe. Oh, that and who that's her name yeah zoe there is no eve there is no eve eve is a shout do i have to bring up here eusebius eusebius come here come here nope keep the chains on keep your little bald head just like that eusebius ewa is a shout it is a title that the bacchans use one of the cult names of Bacchus. Are you ready? I'm going to release this tonight up into the air. Are you ready? This is, this is in that beam of the eclipse, right? This is right on that knife's edge. Ewas. 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 The name. The name of Bacchus. The cult name. Ewas. So everybody knows. Even the early Christian Eusebius knew. <laughs> Church historian, bro. He knows. It's a Bacchic shout. It's a Bacchic cry. Ewa. Her name was Zoe. Zoe. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah, Zoe. Restore Zoe, say the poets. Isn't that nice? Restore Zoe. So let's see. You thought it was the Garden of Eden, right? You thought it was the place and the poop in the beginning and the whoosh, everything comes together and we're coming out of the water. You didn't see any of the gods behind it, did you? And you wondered to yourself, why is God referring to himself in the plural? Why is he saying if there's only one, how is it that he's saying, oh, shit, now the people are going to become like us. Their eyes are going to be opened. They're going to end up naked in a frolic, frolic fest. And the next thing you know, I'm going to be yelling about the seed of Lucifer that's in Eve. Oh, good gracious. How do they keep this stuff straight? Let's just go right to the text, people. This is Bible. I want you to realize this is the Bible as it has never been taught in this century. Yeah. Never. Why? Because this has been sealed from us. You thought this was a Hebrew text. It is not. It is not. Let's open it up and read it together for the first time, shall we? Shall we? This man is crazy. Yes. Love the mania. It's, it's coming. It's coming. Tonight it's coming. Watch. Okay. Here, here it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so he called the name of his wife. So, yep, let's go on. Next one. Boom, 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 boom. And um, yeah, so he, God, Hotheos, who's the Kurios, the God who is the Kurios, what does he do? He puts this paradise on. He puts this paradise in Edem. In Edem, my Greek students, notice it is not Eden. 
It is Edim. I am even showing you a new land, a new creation. I'm going to show you Edim. Edim. Now, for those of you who want the extra kick of the magic, because remember, these are the magic books that we've got anyway. If you want the extra kick of the magic, you, uh, um, you only have to follow this as far as the cult right allows you to stay there, right? As long as you can see the cult right, you're in good, good place um, for this magic. Incredible. Are you ready? Let's pull it out. Um, everybody, hold on. Hold on because it's going to feel a little bit uncomfortable. Give us the next one, Chewy. Um, he put this paradise. Yeah, he put this paradise in the east. You know, it's eastward toward the rising sun, right? And there he's put the, the dude whom he had educated, right? Whom he had trained for this thing. What's this dude need? It turns out dude needs that virgin Minerva. Wow. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Is, has he drugged Adam yet? Is anybody? Is he drugged Adam? Not yet. You're okay. I promised you that God drugged Adam tonight. So just wait. Just wait. We'll get there. We'll get there. It's coming. It's coming up. Next one, please. Yeah. And then um the, the Lord, the God who is the Lord, you know, he um he took the man whom he formed and he, you know, educated and he put him into the paradise now what does this say on the third line it says into the paradise but then it's got a genitive there taste through face what is the the paradise of what every english translation has cut this out every english translation that i've seen has cut this out what this didn't make it you see in the back translation of the hebrew it didn't make it when it was being forced back um, by um, scholars to try to create a Hebrew template. You know, those guys are all out there in the caves with their scrolls. You know what they're doing? They're copying Greek texts in the Hebrew. And when they do so, they mess things up because the Hebrew cannot capture with its limited vocabulary the extensive vocabulary of the ancient Greek. So you lose things. This is one of the things that got lost. And I'm so glad to be able to restore it to you. What is what the? It's a paradise of trufe. What is trufe? Give it to me. Give it to me, Chewy. Look at this softness, delicacy, ooh, daintiness, laboriousness, um, luxuriousness. Excuse me. And then we get one wanton, wantonness. What is? What is that which is wanton? Can somebody tell me? What is wanton? I know we've mentioned wanton before. I want you to see the Oxford definition. That's the dated definition, but that's the one we're talking about for, you know, because nobody uses this anymore, right? Nobody waxes wanton anymore. It's a shame. Nobody waxes wanton. But um, here we go. Wax on and wax off, right? Sexually unrestrained or having many casual sex relationships. Okay. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Just leave that up there, Chewy, for a second, because I want this to absorb into people's brains. Are you ready? The Garden of Edim is a paradise of sexual promiscuity. Wait. What? When I came in here, I thought it was poop, poop, poop. God points. Things go boop, and out comes this man and woman. Poop, poop. Now you're telling me it's a dirty, dirty place. Yes, you're going to end up naked and eyes open. Naked and eyes open. You may meet the devil. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Wow. Next one before we, before we um, lose him, Chewy. This has to penetrate quickly. It has to set. I want a specific timer. Look, um, here's the, you know, you can be um, luxurious, you know, effeminate, licentious, you know, to be that reveling. This is the description of the Bacchant, right? This is what the mean ads do. Why do you think it is? It 
effeminate because they are performing as me. They are entering that state. Paradise, my friends, is a place for menads. Paradise is a place for menads. Check out all of the oracular sources. Check all of the oracular symbols that you find in works like the Argonautica, the one by the Roman Flaccus. Check out that source and you'll see this laid out beautifully. This is Bacchic cult. People don't realize if you say mystery, you're saying Bacchus. People, people and you, oh, what? How, whoop, eh? How is that? How is that? Shut up. There is one mystery. One Bronze Age mystery. And from that mystery comes all of the others. From that comes the death and resurrection mystery. From that comes the one who is the child of God through the virgin. This thing that we're looking at, this book of Genesis with this garden, this was a place where a God, where a curios established his own worship. It was an oracular religion where the Ewa, who was Zoe, would bring the man to the place of initiation where their eyes would be opened. There's only one problem. There's only one problem. He pulled out. Devil got in the way. Yeah. Had to do with the dying thing. Mm -hmm. And the technical truth of the matter. Poor devil. Poor devil. When your kudios is a lying sack, it's all you can get. It's all you can get. A third of the angels, people. A third of the angels. Think about that for a minute. One out of three said, God can take it and stick it. One out of three angels. Wow. Think about that for a minute. Think about it. You think you're smarter than they are, don't you? The watchers know that. They know that. They watch you. It's the fuzz in the air that they get. You think you know better. You don't. You don't. You don't know this quantum physics, right? People, we got to we got to take the humble route. We got to take the humble route. Let's go back to the source. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you the, the poisoning. I'm going to show you the attempt to turn Adam into a slave of the Kurios. You ready? You ready? This is a real, this is a real mystery thing. Did you see Moses sitting there right next to the muses? Did you see him? <laughs> Let's go. Here we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <sighs> okay, people. This is for the this is for the people among you, and I know you're out here. A lot of you are like this. You're the smart ones. I want you to figure out this has a, a little game going on in it in the Greek here. You know, it's explaining to you the way that we derive the name for woman. The Greek name for woman, which is Gune. Gune. And it says that name Gune is derived from the fact that she was taken, that she was taken from him. Taken from him. Okay, just conceptually hang in there with me. She was taken from him. So wait a minute. This this word, Gune, this word Gune. The word for woman, it's got to be, does it say taken from a man? No, it doesn't. So the phrase is nonsensical. What about if it's in Hebrew? What about if it's in Hebrew? 
What about if it's in Hebrew? I can hear you. I feel your energy. I know you're out there. I feel you. Um, it doesn't work in Hebrew either. Hebrew is just ish and isha, right? All you do is put a feminine on the on the root. There's no taking out of, there's no word coming from it. But now remember this text, this Bible is written in the third century, third and second, and maybe even first. In the third century. So um what do we expect to happen? We expect for it to reflect learning from the third century and customs and culture. And guess what it does? It does precisely. Bring it up again, Chewy. Bring it up again. Um, she was taken from the man. Where do, how are we going to make this thing make sense? How are we going to, because it, it's the linguistically, it does, they call her Gune because she was taken from the Anir. Uh, no, ish from ish. Ah, nope. But if you go back to Etruscan, what? Etruscan, Pulaskian, the old stuff. Watch this. You know where Hephaestus comes from? That old stuff. Lucifer, the old stuff. The old stuff. Are you. Are you kidding me? This is worship of, oh my God. Bring up the next one. Bring it up. Look what happens, people. Look what happens. This is the word wirago. Wirago in Latin. And it literally means led from the man. Led from the weir. It means that if it were this word, it would make complete sense. Well, what is this word? This is the word for a heroic maiden. A, a what? A female warrior. A female warrior. You see any female warriors? Right? We got them. We got them too. I've seen them. They say they make better snipers than anyone. Yeah? We're Ago. We're Ago. They ought to let them control everything too. You know what I mean? Because I'll bet you, I'll bet you a few of these as generals would be outstanding. Love it. Love it. We're Ago. We're go. Okay, let's keep keep. How is that Etruscan getting in there? You tell me. You tell me. We're reading a book that you didn't realize. See how you trampled over this, just like I did. You just walked over it with King James. You just walked over it with that Hebrew Masoretic text because the Hebrew Masoretic text didn't know how to render that pleasurable sex garden. It didn't know. Didn't, should we? All right. No. And that's how stuff gets buried in history. That's how stuff gets buried within text. This is the advantage of being um, in classical philology. This is not a recruitment, but um, this is the advantage of classical philology. It gives you access. It gives you access to the sources, and you figure out. You read them. You read a hundred other sources around them, and then you figure out what the vocabulary is doing. It's logic and science, bro. It's not voodoo, right? Logic and science. This is the I'm trying to bring back this pre-Socratics, bro. Let, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Um, yeah, what happens here? Yeah, so look, nobody's around for Adam that is a boethos. He's got nothing. What is a boethos? This is what he needs that God makes for him. That God makes for him. And I promised you I was going to show you the drugging, right? Okay, so we're at the party. We're at the Bacchic party in the Paradise Sex Garden, right? And Adam is lonely. He's sitting there all by himself. And there's animals. You hear the music? Doom, doom, doom. There's animals there. Why? Yeah. Yeah, no, this one? No, doesn't do it. Doesn't do it for me. What does he need? A boethos. What is that? It's something very specific in Greek, which again, the Hebrew is unable to capture. It is that individual. It is that individual who comes to your side with that shield. Do you know what Athena carries around? Who is the Wirago of all Wiragos? Athena, Minerva. If you look at that definition for Wirago up there, you're going to see Minerva's name. 
next to it. She's the one with that shield. You see that? You see that Minerva there? Uh-huh. There's a reason. Look at the Amazon at the bottom. This is what you talk about with Amazonian women. They can be one of these boythos. They can be that one who comes up on your side in battle, and the two of you will conquer. Why? Because her shield, take it down, her shield is protecting you. You run with Minerva. Isn't that nice? <sighs> Fantastic. Um, that's Eve. She wouldn't have a title on her name, Ewa, unless she was that Bacchic Menad. And these Bacchic Menads, I must remind you, and many of you are buying courses and you're looking at you're, you're looking at things online about mystery religions, mystery, and somebody's gonna make some profit profit off of you. You're walking up to people on the street. You know what you are? Let's do mirror time. This is mirror time. Should we? Mirror time. Let's mark this. Um, you're walking. You know what you're doing? You're walking in the street. Now, there's a dude or a dudette sitting there, and they've got a deck of cards. They're going to tell you your future for $25. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Yeah. Do you know what should happen? Do you know what should happen? We should all find out what happens to those people on the other side when they get to those places that possess those powers that were so pure that they exposed for the sake of prostitution because that's what they're doing. They're prostituting themselves. Prostitution. <sighs> okay. Yeah, it disappoints me. But that's not what we're here for, right? You and I, we don't want that. We don't want the street show and that. We want the reality. We want that ether, that quantum physics that lies behind what they're doing. Let's see the next tech. Let's keep opening it up. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens here? He needs this Virago. He needs this Minerva. And um, so what does God do to him? Look at Here it is. Look at line 21. Kai epebalen hoteos ecstasin. Ecstasy. Ecstasy. God, what is God's solution to finding the one for Adam? Right? Which is funny because can anybody smell? Can anybody smell the Argonauts? Can anybody smell the captive women? Can anybody smell the sorceress? Why can't this dude, Adam, do his stuff on his own? There's nowhere, you'll notice in the text so far, that it has said, that it has said Adam is the first man. There's nowhere in the text. Yeah, yeah, that there were no other human beings around here. No, 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 do you see what's happening? This is not about your God speaking things into existence. This is the book of the generation of Gaia and Uranus. Yeah. And your God has his place. Mm, 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 mm. Look at us, people. We're taking, we're ripping that Bible right out of their hands. I have that Bible holding it right in my hands. There's not a Christian that can touch it. There's not a Christian that can touch that thing. Whoo! Whew, I don't mean any of them. Not a single one of them. We have the text now that gives us the freedom. That's the Bacchic power. Now you know why Bacchic worship always centers around the muse. Now you know. Oh, God. Love it. Okay. Well, um, another text. Another text. Um, look at here. Uh, look at here. Where did I get? <clears throat> Dis, yeah, displacement standing aside. Where was the, I can't see the top entry. Existem. Mm, 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 the ecstasis. Good. So um, what is this when you, they're telling you from right from the 
top. Remember I said, people, that verbs, go to the verbs and always see what the verbs are that comes from, and it's existemi here. So it's kind of to stand out of, and people will say this, preachers will say this all the time. They'll be like, oh, when you know, this is a, take, take the word apart literally and see, well, it's a little more sophisticated than that. A little more sophisticated. The jump in meaning is not as simple as you'd think. Yeah, this means to stand outside. To stand outside. Now, should we blow it up? And let me see the, um, let me see the drift on this one. Look, standing aside, number two. Number two, standing aside. Distraction of the mind from terror and astonishment, right? So this is not necessarily your, your daddy, your mommy's ecstasy right this is not their ecstasy this is the stuff that you can get from terror you mean you can be in terror and ecstatic at the same time you mean you can be astonished confused confounded uh we're about to see paul in this drugged out confounded state of ecstasy yeah they're not talking about ecstasy like we do right they're not talking about bliss they're talking about a place. Have you been to that place where you can produce the face of Pan? Can you produce the face of Pan? I know many of you have. Wait, leave it up there. Please. I know many of you have. Many of you have. You may not have seen it. Yeah. Have your lover hold up a mirror and show you the face of Pan if you so have it being possessed by that pan by that spirit is a place that you can only go that you can only go through the orgasmon these are the orgia these are the rites these are the rites you can produce that face face you are calling. Do you see how the sexuality is a part of the ancient cult? I was saying before you prescribing to these, to these um, cult, you know, mystery cult 101 and see, yeah, you're only going to get so deep. Sorry, but you, I'm bringing the sources to, right? Because you people are special and I recognize that and I'm valuing your time, I'm valuing your time. Give me the Give me the text. Next one, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Watch what happens, though. It becomes distraction of mind, right? Keep going. Keep going. Next one. Oh, money K. Whoops. Are we back? Chewy. Watch the star clusters. Um, trance. Trance. Anybody in trance out there, people? Anybody in trance? Guess what? It is trance and mania we're talking about. Trance and mania. How do you think you're going to get oracular? How do you think you're going to get oracular if you're not in trance? You want to see Paul in trance? You want to see Paul drugged? What did God do to Adam? He drugged him, made him enter ecstasy. What does Paul do? Paul enters ecstasy but paul's ecstasy has to do with a thorn in his flesh a messenger of satan and a 13 year old boy wait what i didn't hear that a, th a 13 year old boy wait your honor can you force this witness to cough that up again because you repeat your question um Paul with a how old? Um, 13. Not yet 14. Hmm. Okay. Sure. Are you sure? Let's look at it. Let's look at drugged out Paul doing his thing. Are you ready? Because we are in paradise. You're not going to believe me, but we are in paradise. I thought you said paradise was a place for sex and drugs and I am eye opening things. Yes, I did. And so does Paul. Chewy, bring us to the next star system. Um, nope, we'll, get, we'll come back to that later. Keep going down. Yep. Mm, no, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Paul says, this is 2 Corinthians 12. Paul says, I'm just going to translate for this for you. 
I'll just stand up like this. Oi, the anthroponic. I knew a dude in Christ. Wait, what? You knew a dude in Christ? Take that down. You knew a dude in Christ. What does that mean? Look at the translations of this. It's hilarious. The, the ones that try to stay so literal, you know, you can't capture the meaning. I knew a person in Christ. I knew them in Christ. Mm. Okay. Go on to the next. Go on. What does it mean? Um, let's figure out what that means. Proeton. Proeton. What? Um, premature of 14 years. Just before 14 years. Now, your translations will have caved on this one, right? And they will say 14 years ago. But this is a very strange way of putting that. Um, and I'm going to say, since we've already mentioned the anthropon, that this is putting the kid's age within framework. And it's perfectly within its rights to do that. I mean, this is not odd, right, to express age. So he's, he's a little bit before um, 14 years old. So you knew this guy in Christ, right? Yeah. And then he says something really weird because Paul is high. He's high right now. Did you know he's high? He's high. He's describing visions he has. Visions. These are visions that are caused by the messenger of Satan. Are you ready? I don't know, he says, whether it was in body. I don't know whether it was out of body. Only God knows. Only God knows. But this guy was pulled all the way up into the third Uranos. Next one. Wait, what? The kid that you're with was pulled into the Uranos? How do you know? How do you know when the kid that you're with, okay, how do you know that he's entered into that, into that area? <sighs> Facial expression. Right. You are bringing out pan within the person. You are causing that possession through your drug sex act. Yeah. It is a brilliant form of control, of ancient cultural control. And this stuff comes from the Bronze Age people. It's when they're developing it. Now, it may have, it may have happened pr prior, but we don't have any records of it. We do from the Bronze Age sorcerers. We know what they were doing and what kind of boy slaves they were making and what kind of prostitution they were pushing. We know what kind of drugs they were using. And we know what people were saying, at least, about what they were doing. Because we have that literature. We have that evidence. And remember, this is hundreds of years before the Bible ever existed okay so this is the real that we're looking at let's go to the text one more time and again i appreciate your time um he was taken up next one to the third heaven okay um what is that um yeah let's keep going i'm gonna check that with the next text um and i yeah and i i knew a man i know this guy right well i don't know whether in mind or body i don't know he says it twice he's Wait, Paul, your visions, they're either, they can be out of body, of course, of course. He's taken up in the spirit. He's taken up in the spirit. When Jesus sees Uranos crack open, right? And you're standing there on the shore. You're standing there on the shore with the baptism. And he comes out of the water and the stuff John has given him has allowed him to see Uranos open. Uranos open. It's in that cup. Did you drink out of the phallus shaped cup that the satirist juvenile tells us about? Did you drink out of that, Jesus? Is that why you're seeing Uranos the way you are? Is that is that why you can do this? You know, are you just the one who's requiring the Ewa? Is that what you need? Jesus. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. What is going on? Text. Let's go back to the text. Mm, okay, before we get too dizzy, next one. These are the last couple. Um, and 
Yeah, so what happened to his boy? Now, what happened to his boy or the anthropon? What happened to him? He was harpage. He was snatched. You ever been snatched? The harpies are snatchers. Harpies are snatchers. Yeah. They are beautiful too. Don't, don't let them tell you they're ugly. Right? That is a modern misconception. Um, the snatchers came and got him. They came and got him and they took him to where? They took him to the Garden of Edom. They took him to paradise. They took him to paradise. Why did they take that boy to paradise? Does anybody, yoo-hoo, does anybody smell the cult? We've all been here, right? We all watch this ceremony eye to eye. You guys know this. We've seen these sources. We know what's going on. This kid there, what is he doing? He is receiving the things that are not to be repeated. Wait, what? These are the things that we cannot talk about. These are the things that if you are a mystery initiate, you do not talk about. Now, I'm going to make a personal appeal. Why don't you flood your minds with images? I'm going to make a personal appeal to those of you out there who have suffered this silence, who have been forced to remain silent, not to speak about things, because these things are the things that we who are initiated keep quiet. And there's a certain place that you just can't go. We've been there. We've been there with Jesus. Yeah, we've been there with Moses. Mm -hmm. And now, unfortunately, we're on our way back. We're on our way back. Tonight, I'm hoping that you are beginning to see that the lace days is not just the robber. I'm hoping that you're beginning to see that the cult of the mystery as it develops in the Bronze Age, that that cult is a cult that involves sex, drugs, children, and Jesus Christ, who was arrested in a public park with a naked boy at 4 a.m., Screaming, I am not a trafficker. I am not a trafficker. This book that you thought was so holy, it was, but it wasn't yours. No, it doesn't belong to you. This book is a Greek work from the third century, and it has within it some of the greatest gems of this mystery initiation in this mystery rite. God, the Kurios, from the very beginning, was establishing the mystery of the oracular fire. Who is this ion? Who is this ion and will he be castrated? Thank you for coming tonight. Friday, I'll be at Lady Babylon on discourse. I appreciate your time. We will return to Lay Stays Part 2 on the night before we can enter into that inner sanctum. Thank you and hail Satan. Maybe we could walk together again